Welcome, my name is Wade Nomura and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Today I want to take you uh, through a little tour I have. Uh, it's going to be a PowerPoint presentation based on the structure of Rotary. One of the unique factors about Rotary is that the structure itself lends itself to where we have Rotaries. 1.2 million Rotarians actually are not members of Rotary. It is the Rotary Club that becomes the actual member of Rotary International. The clubs are the ones that charter in. And then above that, we have what's called the district. The district organizes geographical clubs. Beyond that is what's called the zone. And then beyond that is Rotary and Rotary International. What I wanted to do is share with you a little bit about this structure. And the easiest way I thought to do it this way uh, would be via PowerPoint. So I brought together a PowerPoint for you. I hope you'll enjoy. This was originally started by Pearls, which is a leadership group that we use. And it helps orient the uh, new Rotarians into what's going on in Rotary itself. This is a class that's offered uh, to all Rotary clubs around the district and some of the outside areas. And we hope that this will then bring awareness of what Rotarians actually joined. To start with the, uh, the first slide presentation, uh, first slide we have here is what we call Rotary Then and Now. This is where Rotary itself, um, we talk about what the history was like, which I had did in the past episode, and now what it has become. The first part of it we take a look at is your Rotary District. Now, Rotary Districts are made up of clubs, and these clubs are in a specific geographical area, and there are roughly, believe it or not, actually, there are 534 Rotary Districts worldwide. Now, this covers an area of over 200 countries and geographical regions, so it is a um, huge as far as international uh, presence. The other part too which is fascinating about this is that each Rotary District is represented at Rotary International by the sitting District Governor. So a District Governor is the only person that is the official officer of the Corporation of Rotary International. I'm going to jump into our district now, Rotary District 5240. Rotary District 5240 consists of 74 clubs um, in an area that covers Ventura County, Santa Barbara County, San Luis Obispo County, and Kern County. There are about 3,500 Rotarians that kind of fluctuates up and down maybe 100 or so, and it has ranked within the top 10 districts in the world, not only in foundation, foundation giving, but also in education. You'll notice on the bottom of that slide, too, it says the birthplace of Pearl's training. Pearl's is practical, relevant leadership skills. This was developed in our district to help create clubs um, to become more efficient through the leadership programs that we offer to the presidents of each of those clubs. And that's where Pearl's has come from. Original name for that actually was um, Potential Rotary Leadership Skills. And that was dropped because of the fact that there were a lot of people willing or wanting to take the program, but they did not want to hold a Rotary leadership position. The next picture we see is um, a picture here of our district. It's the actual photo of this one, and we take a look at that one. You'll find uh, something fairly unique and fascinating about it and how uh, we kind of represent the spans of geographical spans of the district. You'll notice that dead center of that map is Taft. Uh, which I think is quite fascinating because even though that's the center, everything else occurs around that. Now Taft, by the way, has an outstanding club. They're very active. They have done great things. They work quite well with uh, Taft College. One of the programs I worked with them there uh, was what's called, um, well, it's, it's a program to help develop people get back in and give them life skills so they become independent living. So um, that was one of the programs that they are very strong in. The next slide uh, we see is a picture, uh, actually, of all of the different areas. And you notice with the nine photos that you, we have everything uh, from deserts to alpine forests to the ocean to the mountains. I put Bakersfield right in the middle because geographically that's pretty close to the center of our, uh, our district. What's unique about it, too, we are probably geographically one of the most diverse districts in, in the world. Now, true, there are some districts that encompass as many as six or seven different countries. But geographically, we have, um, we are right next door to um, Death Valley, which is the lowest point um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the United States or North America. Right next to it, or very near to that, is Mount Whitney, which is the highest point 
on the contiguous states of uh, the United States. And this all happens within just a few miles of our district boundaries. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. Again, I wanted to share the pictures with you because most people don't realize that districts and clubs are all made up of different cultures. And those cultures oftentimes are geographically in region. The next slide we have shows the uh, board of directors. Now our district is governed um, and it is incorporated. It's an incorporated district, but it is governed by the board of directors. The board of directors currently, um, current governor, Nick Frankel of Westlake Village. We have the incoming governor, governor-elect John Weiss from Morrow Bay. And then the uh, governor nominee, Sandy Swartz from Bakersfield East. We have the immediate past governor, which is Jim Bell from Bakersfield Twilight also serves on that board, and Vicki Arndt, who is a member at large selected by the current sitting governor, which changes with the governor. So each time a governor takes office as the, the chair of that, then that person has the uh, ability to select somebody uh, as a member at large. Now Vicki's from Thousand Oaks. This was uh, put in place fairly recent. It was about 2012-2013 under um, past governor Frank Ortiz that we actually changed the structure of that. Before that time, 2011 and 12 was the year I served as governor. And you'll find something fascinating about that because if you go back to 2011, 12, and before that time, the board of directors actually included only two members, the governor or the current sitting governor and the district secretary. The fascinating part is that the district secretary actually did not have a vote on any decision making. So you guessed it. The district governor had the exclusive right to make and break whatever they wanted to have done, which was a huge setback as far as continuum. And the reason why board of directors came about, specifically to make sure that the best interests of the clubs, the continuity, and the way the district will progress in the future will not have these hiccups and setbacks. And uh, I think it's been a great idea. It's worked out quite well for us. And because of that, I think we are doing a lot more and better things in Rotary. So what is a Rotary International? We talked about the clubs, and oftentimes clubs never get to actually take a look at the international component of it. But Rotary International is the organization that we all are members of. It is international in, in uh, its oversight, but there's a fascinating part, too, is that Rotary International, as far as the United States, has a separate governing um, component to it because we fall within a jurisdiction of the United States as far as corporate organizations and the above. There is also another group and that is called the RIBI and this is uh, the British group, British Isles, uh, Royal International British Isles, also has their own form of governorship because of the fact that they are also incorporated um, internationally and separate from us. However, we all fall under the same umbrella we all have to follow and adhere to the same bylaws and constitution that Rotary International has. Um, Rotarians are members of clubs, uh, as I told you before, and the clubs are the ones that organize and probably do most of the work. The clubs then make up the district, and the district itself is organized, um, I would say not organized, but it is overseen by the district governor and his staff. Our district has roughly 280 positions of uh, staff district positions. And the reason for that is because of all of the things that go on at the club level. The district, Rotary District, is actually in place to assist and serve as resource uh, tool for the clubs themselves. The clubs ideally and ultimately go, um, govern themselves. Recently, um, in April of 2016, um, the Rotary International had their three-year Council on Legislation. And at that time, the Council uh, had a kind of emphasis, and that emphasis pointed to the clubs having more flexibility. So it's the clubs now that will, are able to govern pretty much themselves and act accordingly within that group. They're seen and overseen by Rotary International. They can't go against too many of the bylaws. However, a lot of the bylaws have been now created to be more flexible, so changes can be made at the club level. It is essential, in my opinion, that the clubs actually decide what is best for them. As more clubs then come up, it is important too that they realize that they have the ability to match to work within a community, to represent a specific group or community 
that would not be the same as, say, a large city or a small urban area. This is one of the importance of why that flexibility component becomes so important. Now, Rotary International Board of Directors is made up of, and I have a, a, a few names here. John Germ is the current president. Uh, he serves a one-year term. Uh, John Germ is from Alabama. Uh, he will serve from uh, June, I'm sorry, July 1st, 2016 to June 30th of 2017. He will also serve as the um, chairman of the board of directors. We have also the um, president-elect, which is uh, Ian Risley. Ian Risley is from Australia. Um, his background, by the way, uh, I've had the opportunity to work with both John Germ and Ian Risley. And uh, Ian Risley's focus has been, in the past, international um, peace and peace efforts. And he's been very instrumental in doing a number of peace initiatives through Rotary and beyond. And uh, Ian's going to be a, another one that we'll be following. He will be in the year 2017-2018. Recently announced, within the last month or so, is uh, Sam Awari um, as the president nominee. And uh, Sam is from Uganda. His presence that Rotary has seen um, on the international level has been a lot in working with the foundation. So he has been working quite diligent with a lot of the foundation projects, programs that, that we offer through the Rotary Foundation. Uh, again, he's going to be another outstanding uh, leader for us. And if you will also notice, by taking a look at the three presidents, um, the line of presidents we have on the, um, your left, Ian Risley, the president-elect. In the center, John Germ, the president, current president. And on the right side is uh, Sam Awari. The picture uh, is of three, and that's kind of the leadership that we maintain. Every, in, in sitting, you'll have three presidents usually identified. And what is fascinating about that, if you notice that with the three years, and we just had a, a few presidents move along, that the Rotary International president, once every three years, as stated in our governing, governance documents, states that the international president, every three years, will come from North America. And that is one of the reasons why he had, we have seen presidents coming from Canada, from the United States, uh, and there's been a few from Mexico also. So that is one of the stipulations that the Constitution of Rotary International has, is that currently we have that rule. As the demographics change and the potential for Rotary to have its uh, stronghold, I would say, um, voting delegates become more dominant in different parts of the world, there is a potential of that to change. Currently, that is in place. We've seen strong growth in Asia and in uh, Europe. And that is one of the concerns, I would say, that we as uh, the American Rotarians have, is that we may lose that privilege of having an international president coming from North America once every three years. We have the uh, Rotary International Directors. Our zone, and I will show you a map here shortly, um, is of zone 25 and 26. The current uh, director is Brad Howard, who we had on the show. And by the way, he will be coming back again probably in the next month or so for another show. But he is a current sitting director, and uh, he covers the area of zones 25 and 26, roughly the uh, western states of the United States. And there are 17 directors worldwide. The 17 directors oversee 34 different zones. So if you do a rough breakdown, that is one director for every two geographic zones. They also serve a two-year term. And um, Brad is in his final term, final year right now. And as he terms out, then we have John Matthews coming in, who will serve the uh, next two-year two term. Now, Brad is from Zones 26. And uh, John Matthews is from Zones 25, so we have had an agreement where we alternate um, the directors of each of those. There's a staggered uh, term uh, for each of the different areas of the world, so we don't lose all of the directors every two years, but they stagger out, so half will be shifted out each year. So we have um, then seven, eight coming in now, or eight and nine coming in right now, and then we move that around. So that is the way the directors um, are set up. What else is fascinating is that we also have the Board of Trustees, which is um, the foundation end of that. And a trustee, and recently we just had named Brenda Cressy from Paso Robles, um, 
nominated to serve the, a three-year term starting from the, f the next Rotary year. Um, that three-year term, by the way, is uh, the, probably the longest that we have as far as the volunteer organization itself. We have other positions that are um, in Rotary International. That, for example, is the um, General Secretary, John Hugo, who is actually paid staff. And so, um, again, there's no term on that. Uh, as long as he's doing a good job and Rotary's happy and he's happy, then we will continue on with that path. And uh, I have a feeling that John's going to be around a long time. He's doing a great job. The next uh, slide we have shows a picture, uh, actually, of the zone. It's color-coded by districts. We have 23 districts identified in this, these two zones, and it covers everything from the state of California, Arizona, portions of Nevada, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Hawaii, and a small portion, the uh, southwest corner of Canada. So that is the size, the region, the span of that. It is a quite a large area. By the way, it's probably one of the strongest zones in the world. And when I say that, uh, as far as foundation giving, as far as education, as far as what Rotary does, uh, it definitely has a very strong footprint and impact on these areas, specifically on the western United States. The next slide I have, uh, we are going to now move into the Rotary Foundation. And what's interesting, and most Rotarians uh, really haven't thought about it, you probably are aware of it, but you haven't really thought about it, is that Rotary International is the administrative end of, of Rotary. In other words, that's the business end. They do all of the administrative work. Our dues goes to that to help pay for that. But the projects that we do, the programs that we put in place, aren't funded through Rotary International. They're actually funded through the Rotary Foundation. And that is why it's important to understand that there are actually two separate entities that work together to create what we do for Rotary. The um, foundation was really started by a gentleman named Arch C. Klump, who was uh, the president, Rotary president at that time. And in 1917, he started the uh, foundation with $26.50, which was uh, the amount that was left over from the Kansas City Convention. So once the convention was over, all that money he had made, that $26.50, was then converted over to create the Rotary Foundation and uh, help establish an endowment. The Rotary Foundation uh, is known worldwide. Uh, it sits in the top three um, charity foundations as far as Charity Navigator has rated them. And the reason for that is because of the return factor. If you look at the ratings of that and what, how much money actually is contributed through the Rotary Foundation by Rotarians and how much money comes back, you will find that it is roughly 92, 93 percent, if I'm not mistaken. That number fluctuates around, but it is nearly 100 percent. So a dollar that goes into the foundation usually ends up, almost all of it, going directly to a project site or program. And that is one of the fascinating things, one of the reasons why Bill and Melinda Gates teamed up with us for the uh, Polio Plus um, program is because of that fact, that they knew that the money was going to be used directly for the project and not for administrative expenses. The foundation, uh, we have a, a little part here, it's nonprofit, of course, um, and it is the process and it is the funding that helps the districts and the governors create all of the educational components as, and grants, our humanitarian grants. I'm putting this up here. The bottom line is TRF, uh, the Rotary Foundation. That's the acronym for that, only because, as most of you have kind of noticed, Rotary uh, has a lot of acronyms. The one and only one I'm asking you to remember is TRF, the Rotary Foundation. Now, the Rotary Foundation recently went through, um, I would say, a strategic plan. And that change put in place the requirements that the clubs start handling more of the administration of these grants themselves. And the reason for that is it was getting a little top heavy. We we're getting too much money being spent administration wise at the foundation level. In other words, with the staff itself, we wanted to move this back towards the districts. And so you'll see on this slide the six quote areas of focus. These are the six humanitarian areas that a grant that Rotary will do has to fall within. We have water and sanitation, community and economic development, child maternal health, basic education and literacy, disease prevention, and peace and conflict resolution. Now, each and every one of those has a huge global impact as we do our grants, and that is why these have been set in place. 
Another unique thing, as you've seen in one of my past shows, is that we have what's called foundation cadres. These cadres are volunteer um, Rotarians that actually go out and evaluate each of these projects to make sure that the money is being spent well and wisely. And so we actually patrol, monitor, and police our own efforts. The Rotary Foundation, um, I, I'll show you different ways of giving because this is important for Rotarians. There are two ways to give. First is through the endowment. And the endowment fund, or the permanent fund as it used to be called, is um, the pledge that you put into your estate. It's a planned giving. Uh, it is actually part of your, your um, life estate, um, and, or will, or however you establish your giving on your demise. And so that is the endowment part of it. And the endowment part of it, you will get recognition for on your pledge or your promise to give to the foundation. Realizing, and this is amazing, um, again, one of the reasons why I think Rotary is such an outstanding organization. The foundation will not seek if, in fact, you pledge, say, in my case, if I were to do a million dollars, I were to pledge that and I could not fulfill that obligation on my passing. The Rotary Foundation will not seek a cent of that. Even if I could afford that, they would hope that that pledge, that promise that these Rotarians have made will come back to them. But they will not seek a cent of that. They are hoping and anticipating that your pledge and promise will fulfill that, that obligation. The annual fund is a different part. That is the cash contributions component to that. And the cash contributions can be given to anything restricted, which is Polio Plus, a district grant, a global grant, um, a sponsorship of a scholar, anything like that, or given directly to what we call the World Fund, and that is a share program where we put that, or the Rotary Foundation moves that around to uh, areas that they actually need. And so those are the different ways. Rotary, by the way, has a contribution um, of $1,000. If you do that, you're known to have what's called then be recognized as a Paul Harris Fellow. And that is a $1,000 contribution to the Rotary Foundation um, based on, on your behalf. And you receive awards for that. There is also an Arch Clump, which I failed to mention. The Arch Clump Fellow, by the way, is given to an individual that has contributed in cash $250,000. And we have quite a few of those actually even in our district. So um, those recognition amounts are based on, in my opinion, the amount of passion that these Rotarians have to try and create that difference in the world by investing in our humanitarian efforts. My hat's off to you and thank you very much for those contributions and making that difference. The next photo we have actually shows some of the, quote, Rotary bling. Now, if you're not a Rotarian and you're looking at this, you're going to think, well, you know what, what, what is all the bling? Well, believe it or not, most Rotarians would have the same question. What is all that bling about? So I put this up there because I want to walk over it with you real quickly. The top portion shows the different levels of, quote, Paul Harris. We have, um, starting with sapphires, we have one, two, three, four, and five sapphires representing two, three, four, five, and six thousand dollars of giving to the foundation. Then we have on the bottom the rubies, red rubies. So we have one, two, and three rubies that then represent the next level. What's interesting about that is that Rotary actually has a way of sharing recognition. In other words, if you were to give $1,000 as a Rotarian, you would also be given the opportunity to give somebody else a Paul Harris. So your Paul Harris then you earn, but you also are given the opportunity to give somebody else that same Paul Harris. Um, so that's the way that works out. The ribbon that you see on the left is what's called the Paul Harris Society. And that ribbon itself is worn with one of the... Um, one of the medals, one of the, the pins that you would wear, and that represents a pledge and a promise to give $1,000 a year to the Rotary Foundation. The uh, small ribbon, the triangle ribbon that you see, is what the, we call the uh, benefactor, and that's given to somebody that has pledged $1,000 through a state to the Rotary Foundation. The picture in the center, that, the square that, that you see, that's a major donor, level one, that is uh, $10,000 recognized with the uh, Paul Harris Society, which is the $1,000 a year. And on the right side and the bottom is a circle with two diamonds in it. Uh, I am told those are actual diamonds. Uh, I, I believe them because they're hard to replace. Um, but that is a bequest society, level two, $25,000 in pledge through your estate to the Rotary Foundation. So that's the way that works out. The next slide that we have actually is a slide of the Rotary and Polio Now tie and scarf. 
and most Rotarians don't realize this, but if you were to contribute $150 to the Rotary Foundation on behalf of Polio Plus, you could then do the paperwork and they will send you, through the paperwork, a tie or a scarf representing in Polio Now, part of our themes. Now, what's unique about it, and I think important this year, is that these were actually done when John Germ was the chair. Our current president was the chair of the Polio Plus uh, efforts. And because of that, uh, they were actually released out when uh, New Orleans was the international convention, and they still have quite a few of these to these, this day. There's one club that we have in, in our district that actually had somebody, a president-elect, pass away. And when she passed away, she passed away for cancer right before she was to take office. And uh, she left $10,000. The club came to me and asked what we could do. Well, I recommended that every member of that club be given a tie or scarf, and each year, at least once, either during the award ceremony or any other time that they have a special event, that they wear those ties to commemorate and, and remember that, that person that had given so much for, for Rotary. And uh, they do that to this day, by the way. One outstanding effort. Um, and I think that part of it, and wearing a, a tie, a special tie or recognition for that, actually is a good way of, of gaining that recognition and that, that information. The last slide I have up there shows some of the efforts that I've had the opportunity to be involved with. We have water projects that I've done a few projects, uh, shows with you for, uh, the programs. I have the uh, Tamal Interpretive Play Area in Carpinteria, which is, was a million dollar effort. Again, a show that we had done on that one. And the one bottom center is a bandstand that was actually constructed and funded by the Rotary Club of Arroyo Grande. And uh, that was their centennial project. So if you look at these and everything that Rotary has done, uh, you'll find that the organization itself has evolved into something quite outstanding. The impacts, the differences that this organization has made around the world is something that we should all be very proud of. I would like to say I hope you enjoyed this part of the show. This show is one thing that I want to include in my programs because so many of us don't understand why we do what we do for Rotary. But know this. Rotary is, in my opinion, the greatest humanitarian organization in the world. It is, without a doubt, the oldest, and we are making the greatest impacts worldwide. Why? Because of the efforts that you have made. Realize that. I hope you enjoy the show, and take a look at the Rotary Foundation, Rotary International, and all it does. And remember, your club is vital. What you do in your club is the essence of what Rotary is all about. With that, thank you very much. We will see you next time.